In today's episode, we're going to be adding weapon variety, and we're going to do that by adding accuracy, a multi-pellet system for shotguns, spread angle calculations, fire rate control, and the ability to make automatic or semi-automatic firing. This is all building upon episode eight, so if you're just jumping in, you can go back to episode eight and catch up. Otherwise, let's jump into it. We're gonna be doing this by adding some more stats to our weapon resource. This is where we hold our damage, our max ammo. We're gonna be adding some more export variables to this so we can control our accuracy. In fact, accuracy is going to be the first property we add. So underneath our range or wherever you want to organize it, we're going to add another export range from 0 to 100. This is important. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. And we'll set that to just the default of 100. Accuracy here is a percentage. 100 means it's 100% accurate. It's always going to hit exactly where you're shooting. And 0 means it's entirely random. Next, for when we have a shotgun, we need to add two new export variables. I'll add those underneath our projectile scene, and that's gonna be pellet count and spread angle. So if you're doing a pistol, you have one bullet, one piece of ammo that you're shooting, that's gonna be one pellet. If you're shooting a shotgun, you might have eight pellets, and that means we're gonna be using eight different hit scans when we fire a shotgun. And that spread angle is how wide of a shot that shotgun is. In our case, the spread angle and the pellet count, it's only gonna affect our hit scan weapons. A projectile is just gonna shoot a projectile for now. Next, we're gonna add some fire mode properties. So the fire rate is gonna be how many shots you can do in a second. So if I have two, that means we can shoot every half a second. This is going to be good for something like a pistol. And if you had a, a submachine gun, that might be, you know, 10 or 12. The other fire mode is going to be whether or not the gun is automatic. Now, an automatic gun means you just hold the fire button. It's going to shoot. And if it's not automatic, it means you have to pull the trigger each time you want it to shoot. Now we can go into implementing the accuracy system. We're going to go into our weapon controller. We need to go down to our perform hit scan function. Currently we're just doing a hit scan. It's going directly to the spot that we're pointing at, but now we need to introduce some of that accuracy randomness. We're going to adjust this line here. First, we need to use the accuracy stat in our weapon to calculate an accuracy spread. I'm going to go under our from variable line here, and we're going to paste in a accuracy spread variable. And this is going to be 100 minus the current weapon accuracy divided by 1000. So this is sort of a inverse relationship. So if our accuracy is 100, then this is gonna equal zero. And so our accuracy spread is zero. If it's say 50, then this is gonna be 50 divided by 1000. The 1000 here is just to make the accuracy manipulation a lot smaller. And now we need to calculate the difference in accuracy on our X axis and our y-axis. We'll go under our forward variable, we'll paste in this right here, and we're gonna get an accuracy x, which is gonna be a random range of our accuracy spread, minus positive, same thing for our y-accuracy, and then our direction is our forward, which is what we were using, and plus the random accuracy that we are adding. Then in our two, instead of using our forward variable, we're gonna be using our direction variable. And this is already working. So if we go into our pistol weapon, go to our pistol resource, you notice we have all of our settings. We have an accuracy of 100. So let's test that and we should shoot exactly where we are pointing. Now if we go into our pistol resource and let's adjust our accuracy to 50. So it would be 50% less accurate. And now if we have that variation, and then the further away that we go, the bigger that spread is. Now we can apply that same accuracy setting into our projectiles. Just need to go to our spawn projectile in our weapon controller. And our setup is pretty much the same. We need to calculate the accuracy spread. We're going to add that. Let's do it just right before our forward. We'll add that. That's our accuracy spread. And then instead of using just the forward direction, we calculate the accuracy using our accuracy spread and adjust our forward position to our direction because we're adding that accuracy difference. And then we just swap out forward with direction and then also need to change the velocity there. 
One final thing that we need to consider for our accuracy is we need to make sure we're doing it relative to the direction we're facing. And we can do that by multiplying that vector, our random accuracy vector, by the global transform basis of our camera. This is gonna make sure that that X and Y difference is done relative to the direction we're facing. So wherever we're having that accuracy adjusted within our hit scan, we multiply by that basis. And the same thing within our projectile system, we multiply it by that basis. Okay, so we've gotten our accuracy system set up. Now we can move on to making a shotgun, which means we need to add our multi-bullet pellet system. We already have the thing set up in our weapon resource, so let's go to our weapon controller and then our perform hit scan. The shotgun is typically gonna be a hit scan weapon and we're gonna alter this function again. So from this point on, meaning this entire section, we need to run this in a loop. So let's tab that and then fire multiple pellets for I in our current weapon pellet count. So remember we are setting our pellet count. It's defaulted to one, but let's say we wanted to do eight with a, a shotgun. That means we're gonna run this entire thing eight times. We're gonna add another loop for our pellet spread. So if our pellet count is greater than one, then we need to add an additional random spread to this. And that's gonna be our spread angle. Same concept, negative, positive. Put that into a vector, add that to the direction. And again, that direction also needs to have that camera basis. So let's adjust our pistol to be a shotgun. So we'll go to our pellet count. Let's change this to eight. And let's do a spread angle of, I don't know, let's say 0.1. Now, what should happen is when we fire our weapon, we should get multiple raycasts and they should be scattered about just like that. And it should be different every time. And if you're further away, that spread is gonna get bigger. So this works for a shotgun because if you're closer, obviously you're gonna get more of that ammo hitting and that's where you're gonna do that major damage. But if you're shooting from far away, then the shotgun kind of becomes a little bit pointless. Now let me show you the difference if I turn off that spread angle. So we set that to zero. So there's still some accuracy changing, but you're not getting that overall shift. Now using our can fire next Boolean and our fire rate timer, we're gonna be running a timer in our process function. All this does right here is whenever we set our timer and it's greater than zero, and that timer is gonna be based off of our fire rate, we're gonna subtract our delta time from that timer. And when it gets to be zero or less than zero, then we're gonna say we can fire next. Now, if you'll remember from the initial weapon setup, we have a can fire function. And right now, all we're checking is if the current ammo is greater than zero. But we can also check if we can actually fire. To do that, we can just do an and right here and put our can fire next Boolean in there too. So as long as we can fire and our ammo is greater than zero, then this function is gonna pass as true. Now we need to integrate that fire rate into our weapon firing. We have a single function that runs whenever we, we shoot a gun, whenever we fire our weapon. And that is obviously the, the fire weapon function. Right now we're checking if we can fire, which is running this function right here. So we're checking if we have ammo and if we are within our time frame for our fire rate, we're tracking our ammo, we're printing. So let's say we successfully fired our weapon. Well, that means we need to start the cooldown time for our fire rate. So we're gonna paste this in here. And to do that, we're gonna set our can fire next Boolean to false. Remember, this is what we're checking to see if we can fire at all. So that's set to false. At that point, we can't fire again. Then we need to set our fire rate timer. And we're doing that by taking one and dividing it by our fire rate. So. For our pistol, if it's a fire rate of two, we're dividing one by two and that means 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the quickest you can fire again with the pistol weapon. And by setting that fire rate timer, if we go back to our process function, that now equals 0 0.5, it's greater than zero. We're subtracting our delta time until it's back down to zero or, or less than. And, and then can fire next is back to true. That's all we need for the fire rate. We can test this. We'll go back to our pistol weapon. We have a fire rate of two, which means we can only fire every 0.5 seconds. We'll run this and I'm gonna just spam the mouse button and you'll notice that it's only gonna fire at the rate that we want. 
Now, if I set this to a fire rate of, you know, 20, that means we're dividing one by 20. This should be a much faster fire rate. Now, if you didn't want to constantly spam a button to shoot really, really quickly, you would just have an automatic weapon. Well, we can do that too by changing a couple of things. Let's jump to our weapon firing state. So whenever we shoot, we enter the firing state. And when we enter that firing state, we run our fire weapon function. And then we come out of it almost immediately and go back into idle. In order to have an automatic weapon, we need to stay in that firing state if we are still pressing the fire button. So we're gonna replace this right here and I'm gonna paste in what I have. What this is doing is we're checking if the fire action is currently pressed. Within the Gato engine, there are two ways to check whether an input is pressed. There's just pressed, which means has the input been pressed within that frame. And then there's is action pressed, which just checks if it's currently pressed. So the weapon is automatic. We're still pressing the fire button. Next we check if we can fire. And remember this can fire is checking our ammo and whether or not we can actually fire according to our firing rate. If all that is true, then we fire the weapon and the whole process starts over again. If we're not still pressing the fire button, then we go back to idle. And if we're not automatic, then we go back to idle as well. Now let's set our pistol weapon to automatic and make sure our fire rate is, is nice and high. Again, this number is how many shots you can shoot in one second. 20 is, is pretty high. Let's run this and what we should see is I'll press the mouse button and it should fire a bunch of bullets without me doing anything else. Now, admittedly, it does look a little weird because we don't have any you know, juice involved with this. There's no camera kicking or, or gun movement, but that's your submachine gun. Anything that's gonna be an automatic weapon, we have a little bit of a spray there. And let's look at how much we can adjust by everything we just added. We have our pistol weapon. We can change this to a submachine gun by changing the fire rates. Make that 20 is automatic and adjust the accuracy. And a submachine gun is going to be a lot less accurate than a pistol traditionally. So let's say like 60. This will be a good submachine gun. As you get closer, obviously that spread is less. If you wanted to make a shotgun, that wouldn't traditionally be an automatic. I guess you could have an automatic shotgun somehow. And the fire rates, which would be a lot less, that would be how many shots a second? Maybe 0.5. And pellet count, that would be, say, 8. Your spread angle, 0.1. And with that, you have a shotgun. So you can see how you can do a whole bunch of different weapon variants. With all of these options that we've added, we've got a pistol, shotgun, SMG, a rifle. That's all covered just in what we've created right there. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please leave a like. Subscribe for more Gato tutorials. As always, you can get the project source files on my Patreon. Thank you so, so much for everyone who has supported me through that. We've got tons more to cover. We've got a couple of more episodes about weapons, and then we're going to jump into enemy AI. Super excited. Again, thanks for watching, and as always, keep creating.